Hello students, welcome back to another Mr. Wally Rocks video. If you're not in my class right now, just skip ahead to the Google Earth part, that's what you came here for. But if you are in my class, this is your assignment. Thank you for joining me. I just wanted you guys to put in the comments something you look forward to every day. Go ahead and comment below on YouTube something you look forward to every day during quarantine. It's important to always stay positive and look forward to something, no matter how small it is. So I value the little things. And every morning I come downstairs and there's this plant I have that I picked up on a road trip. I was going to Maine last fall and I picked up this plant because there I saw this sign saying free plants. And I was like, my house needs more plants. And it had these cool ceramic tile pieces on it. So I picked it up and there were only three leaves on it at that point. And once I got it, I didn't think it was gonna do anything, honestly. It, it, nothing happened for the, the longest time. But right around when quarantine started, this one shoot started appearing. And it started getting taller. And then a leaf happened. And then another second leaf happened. And then right now, the third leaf is opening up. You can see it right there. So that's just really cool. That's something that I look forward to every day is coming down to see how far my plant has grown. Second of all, Check this out, Mr. Wally Rocks has 127 views. Check that out, 127. You guys must have watched this twice. Here we are in Google Classroom where I have a five step assignment for you guys. We're only doing one apply your knowledge question. Apply our knowledge question step one. Watch this video. If you're already doing it, fantastic. Let's move to step two. Step two, open Padlet map at the link below, bam. This is a world map where I've already provided you three different examples. We'll come back to this. Step three is to use Google Earth to get your location, latitude, and elevation. The key here is that sometimes Google Earth doesn't work with your uh, Sani account, so you might have to use your personal account. I'll just go down here to my Mr. Wally Rocks account. I'm going to search Google Earth, click it, launch it. There's this cool thing on Google Earth where up here in the left-hand tab, you have all these tabs where called the I'm feeling lucky button. And I, boy, I'm feeling lucky today. I'm gonna click it and it's gonna give you some random spot on Earth. In this case it did, but if it doesn't give you a place, just go to the nearest place. So this random spot, Sovetsky, I'm probably butchering that name, is an example of a place that we can figure out the climate for. Back to the Padlet. Let's go over the six factors affecting climate. You can already use other YouTube videos to, to know how these factors work, but today we're just gonna be applying them into a real life situation. These factors are latitude, wind patterns, elevation, water bodies, mountains. In Google Earth, you can easily find the latitude and elevation. You just go down to the bottom right hand corner and it tells you right now the, the latitude is 60 degrees, 32 minutes, 25 seconds north. But we don't need the minutes or seconds. So just round to the nearest degrees, 60 degrees north. Now what this tells us is that we are higher up, closer to the poles, and on average, it's gonna be colder at a 60 degree latitude than it would at a 30. So that's number two. The wind patterns can dictate if you have high or low pressure zones on Earth that then tells you if it's gonna be humid or dry. If it's humid or dry, if you get lots of precip precipitation versus low precipitation, that's going to affect your climate or your weather long term. That's what climate is, weather long term. So at the equator, you have rising air that causes clouds and rainstorms. So anything near the equator is gonna be, is gonna have high precipitation and it's gonna be hot because the sun's rays is hitting it really hard. At 30 degrees, air is sinking. Air is sinking and that causes a high pressure zone that then causes dry, conditions. This is where non-coincidentally all of the Earth's deserts are, is in that 30 degree north and south latitude. Then once you get up to 60, the air then circulates upward again and creates areas of low pressure and it becomes wet again. And in this area you have what's called our jet streams. You can look about look up those in another video. This video isn't for that. 
Elevation is right next to latitude, and wherever your cursor is, it will show you the elevation. So right now in Sovetsky, it's 11 meters. Notice how it's really close to this water body, or the ocean, the Gulf of Finland. Water is crucial because water holds heat longer. So that means in the summer, it's actually going to be colder, and in the winter, it's gonna be warmer. That averages out the fluctuation of temperature long-term, evening out your climate. So you don't have super high fluctuations in temperature. Do we have mountains around Sovetsky? Mm, no, we don't. We have a bunch of lakes. It's relatively flat. So that means that there's gonna be no influence of windward to leeward side on a mountain. Check this example out in California. On this side, it's wet. There's a lot of vegetation, and this is caused by the, the wind running into the mountain, rising and condensing. You can see this in, a, in another video. We, we already learned about this. And on the other side, it's dry because the air is sinking and there's no moisture in it. And it create, the mountains create the desert. This isn't a latitude created desert. Is there a lot of vegetation here? Uh, yes, there is. It's, it's right on the coast. So usually vegetation comes with precipitation. If there's a lot of precipitation due to the place either being near a water body or rising air because of its latitude, this causes precipitation, which then causes vegetation, and the vegetation then gives off more water in a process called transpiration, which then causes the climate to be wetter or more humid. Some videos, they divide climate into four zones, tropical, subtropical, temperate, and polar. But for this assignment, I want you to divide it into tropical, subtropical, cold temperate and warm temperate, and then polar. Like this one video here. I'll link this in Google Classroom if you wanna watch the whole video. It definitely explains how climate works probably a lot better than I can. This video is just about how to explain how you can use Google Earth to know climate anywhere in the world. For your assignment is you're gonna use Google Earth, the I'm Feeling Lucky tool, to find a random place and then put that place in the Padlet map. I provided three examples here for you. My examples are in yellow. In the description of this Padlet, I provided the exact things that you need to get a good score when you're filling out this thing on Padlet. You need your name, you need the six factors that affect climate, latitude, global wind pattern, elevation, water, mountains, vegetation, and I provided them in a one through six pattern, and then my guess. Oh, right here, number one, it's 16 degrees north. There's wet rising air, most likely, because it's near the equator. It has low elevation. It's right near sea level. It has a, a big water body next to it because it's surrounded by the ocean. There's no mountain influence. There's lots of vegetation. This climate would probably be specified as tropical. It's warm because it's near the equator and it's humid because it's near the ocean. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. This has been How to Determine Climate on Google Earth. Go ahead and play around Google Earth with the I'm Feeling Lucky tool until you find a place that you'd like to use. Make sure you use Google Earth in a private account because Sandy account might not work. I provided you three examples to help you determine the climate. Email me if you're having a problem and we can set up a meeting. Use your knowledge to figure out climate.